Hey, in this video, I want to take some a uh, few minutes and talk about heat set threaded inserts. I just got this kit recently as a gift and um, had an application for them. I uh, for a while I've been using these medium duty um, wall wall brackets and use them to make filament shelves. Which if I turn my head out of the way, you can see on the wall up there behind me. And part of this system I've created uh, involves these little 3D printed uh, parts that slide on the rack on the wall mount um, with holes to be tied in with screws so they don't slide around. And then you stick a hunk of one by two in here and then have one up front and you can set your spools in as you can see behind my big head back there. So what I've done in the past is I've taken my little 3D printed part, put the 1x2 in there, drilled a hole, and then ran a, like a sheetrock screw, uh, you know, to hold it and keep things steady. But now that I have heat inserts, I thought, I, I want to try these and this will be a good excuse. So I've got the, I, this is a style I got. It's got the knurling um, on three levels here. And I think there's a style that's made with two rings of knurling that run at angles that might be a little stronger than these, but my limited test with the ones behind my shoulder up there, the purple ones that you can see, um, it worked really well on my initial test. I've got a picture here I can pop up. Um, so you can see the, um, the fit and finish there came out looking really great. And then this is a little, here's a close up on the other corner of kind of my filament shelf and how that works. So, these this black bracket that I have I found um, on Amazon. Uh, the white one you see on the wall is a Home Depot purchase. I think and I bought a ten pack of these for less than thirty dollars. I think they were like twenty eight bucks. Uh, the white ones from Home Depot were a little more expensive. I think they were five fifty six bucks a piece somewhere in that range when I bought those. So anyway, I'm not here to talk about wall brackets. What I'm here to talk about is putting the heat insets inserts into these printed parts and kind of what I've learned and what seems to work well and maybe you have some tips you can leave in the comments for me but this I'm pretty new at this but just using a soldering iron and the inserts uh, works pretty well so let me change my camera angle here and point at my desk so I can show you what's going on okay so what I've got here is uh, I've got four of my slider parts that are gonna I'm gonna put the heat inserts into the side. So the idea is when my one by two is in the bracket, like so, I can run the the heat insert will be inserted here, and I can run a screw in to act as a set screw just to kind of lock this in so it can't move around. So the insert I use uses a M5 screw, and I've got a couple of those over here. And the if you look at the specs of the insert. Where the knurling is, it's a seven millimeter diameter, and then the smooth barrel part in between the knurling is one millimeter less, so it's six millimeters. So what I did when I modeled this in Fusion 360 is I just set the hole size to 6.5. I, I split the difference, um, and actually it was a guess, and it turned out to be a lucky guess because it I got a really good fit on the other ones, and I'm expecting to get the same here. So these four parts are all the same. These are designed, whoops, these four are the same. These are designed with the holes in the center. And these brackets, just to show you real quick without too much of a sidebar, when they're intended to be mounted with the, this is bad on the camera angle here, the long arm is intended to be mounted to the wall and the short arm supports your shelf board or whatever. So the holes on the top here are all uh, centered on the steel. On the angle bar and so you the, the, the way I use them is I put one in the back and one in the front and drop a sorry I got this off the camera I put one in the back one in the front drop a screw in tighten them down and then that gives me the spacing to have a, a spool sit in between however you can mount them the other way but if you notice the holes are not the bottom and the center hole are off center the one on the front is in the middle so these do not work because when you slide them on, you only get part of the hole. If we can get it in the camera. 
So what I did to fix that problem is I, I modeled one with a hole off to the side. So you can slide this one on and it'll line up. So if you do want to use it um, on the long edge, which it is possible, I've got a version of these brackets for that. But again, I digress. I wasn't really here to talk about this model. Um, you know, if you're interested in the shelving pro filament uh, shelf project, let me know in the comments. I'll um, I'll get organized and get this thing posted and um, share these files on printables and maybe do a video on how I put the thing together. It's really not that complicated. And then the last, um, the third type of bracket I made was one where I thought um, we don't care about, maybe we don't want to line one of these up where there isn't a hole at all going through this. Oh, sorry, I keep putting it out of the camera. Line one up where maybe there isn't a hole and you can put a threaded insert in here and then use it, use it as a set screw to lock it into the side of the shelf and then it won't move. So that's the other thing I wanted to try. So I've got my soldering iron uh, heating up. Uh, I did see a tip on one video I watched about this to not get your iron too hot. And I think the one I saw recommended something under 200 degrees Celsius. My dial on mine doesn't even go that low. So I set it at around 225 to 250 C on the ones I did on the other brackets, and that seemed to work well. And the technique I used, so this wall width is 10 millimeters. And so I've got a 10 millimeter tall insert that I'm going to put in here. So the idea is if when I push this in, when it's flush on the top side here, it should be flush on the inside. And what worked really well for me was just to take my needle nose pliers and get kind of a, just a light grip to kind of hold it square. And if you're watching this, you may already be aware, maybe you're not, but they make special tips for these inserts that you can put on your soldering iron that fit right in the hole. And uh, the problem is I don't, I don't have those tips, but I do have, I did have a couple of these conical shaped tips for my soldering iron and when those go through they fit but it stick it goes all the way through and sticks out the end um, for this particular application it's not a problem because the holes I made are going all the way through and so the tip won't won't get into plastic on the other side of the insert so basically I just lined it up on the hole stuck my soldering iron in there held it for a few seconds till it started getting hot and this is really compelling, I can tell. And it's just starting to sink in. And I'm not in a hurry. I'm just letting it go really slow. I think if you did this hotter, it could maybe get away from you. So I really like this technique of kind of going slow because you feel like you have a lot of control. And I'm going to push it till it's just even to the edge. And I'm going to take the flat side of my needle nose here and kind of press it down to get it flush. Just hold that for a few seconds. Yeah, it looks pretty good. You can see a little bit of flashing kind of got pushed through there, but we can take take a little pick or a tweezers, and that it's still kind of soft, so you can kind of break it out of there. Whoop, there goes my plastic, goes flying. Um, this is actually a different brand of filament than I used yesterday, so I don't know if it's behaving a little differently, but yeah, I'm just using my flush trim, uh, flush cutters here to trim away the excess and yeah, it looks pretty good. Um, that could be a little bit lower, so I'm going to heat it up just a little bit and give it a little push. There, I like that a little better. All right, I'm going to set that aside to cool for a second and go on to the next one. So part of my experiment, and I can you can see in here that, um, sorry, the focus is a little wonky there, but you can see the, the uh, edge comes through pretty flush on the inside. The thing I wanted to test, because um, these come in, these neural um, inserts come in different lengths, so... This was a 10 millimeter. I've got uh, a couple of eights, and these are sixes. 
Um, so I want to try two eights and two sixes and see how the performance is, if it makes any difference in how they go in, how much flashing I get or whatever. So I'm going to grab this eight millimeter, get a light grip. Yeah, and just for full disclosure, this is uh, Bamboo Labs PLA that came with my X1 Carbon. Print quality is great on it, so I thought I'd try the heated inserts on it. Let's see how that came out. Okay, that's down flush. And, yeah, I can see the, I can see the flashing in the hole, which isn't showing up very good on camera, but it's, it's in there. So if we push that through... You can see it here. So yeah, the difference here is the knurling or the insert doesn't come all the way through, so it's gonna leave some material around the hole. And that's what I wanted to test to see how it was gonna work. So maybe before I do the second one, I'm gonna see how, ooh, that's still warm, burned my finger. Yeah, it looks like it's probably gonna work okay. So we'll, uh, We'll set this one aside, and now I'm going to do the same thing with a 6 millimeter one. These are getting a little... The other thing I will mention is when I did model these holes, I just put a little half a millimeter chamfer on each one on the... just to help it kind of stay square when I was pushing it in. Okay. So that one is in. And I don't see as much flashing on that one. So we'll set that aside and let it cool. And then the the ones that I did with the side kind of set screw mode, um, I made this one, I, I'm going to use an M4 insert on this one by uh, six millimeters on that. So, sorry, got my big mitts in the way. So anyway, that six millimeter long is going to go into that hole, and you can see I modeled that. So this wall, this side wall here is only two millimeters thick, so I did a little bump out of four millimeters so I can get kind of the full, the full depth here on this insert, and I think that's going to fit in there. Oh, looks like I got some plastic on my tip. I'm going to try to clean that off a little bit. There, that looks a little better. Okay, let's see how this one goes. Seems to be going in nicely, and I think I'm there. Yeah, that one looks good. So, let me make sure it's good and square. Yeah, and I think you don't you want don't want to get too aggressive while it's still warm, but if you can get some of that um, flashing, that kind of flashing and stuff that pushes through while it's still warm, it might help. Um, what I did find um, with the other ones I made is just driving a screw through. It might be a little tough to get through the plastic, but it'll kind of push the plastic through as it cools down. So, all right. So why this while this one is cooling down. I'm going to go back to the first one, which is M5. And let's see how far we can just hand turn that. Oh yeah, that's going in easy. Yeah, so that worked. That worked really well. Okay, so that's the 10 millimeter one. Um, the next one here will be the 8 millimeter which does not go through all the way through. You can see here, again, I apologize for the focus, but this is a, just a lowly webcam I'm using. Um, I, can, I can see what should be some interference, although it's, I'm still able to hand turn it just fine. Well, that's, yeah, that's no problem at all. This is act, these are actually working a little better for me in this bamboo PLA than the uh, 
I think the other stuff was 3D Max, I'm pretty sure. I don't remember what brand. I got a couple of different ones floating around. Um, okay, so the 8mm seems to work fine. I, you know what I didn't do that I wanted to? So the, the vertical, I guess vertical, depending on your perspective, or horizontal, the knurling pattern, I mean, I'm pulling on this pretty hard and it's not it's not budging I'm way more than happy with the strength of these so you know maybe these maybe these are fine I, I thought um, I don't know why but I thought the ones with the angled would logically to me seems like they'd be stronger okay and this is a six millimeter one and I must have some plastic in here because I'm running into um, some resistance turning it by hand so I'm gonna finish it with my screwdriver Yeah, I can turn it by hand now, but it's it's a little tighter than the other one, so there must be some schmutz in there from the plastic. But not bad; it works really well. And again, this is this is strong. That's a six millimeter insert in a it's ten millimeter wall, so that's pretty good. And then the last one I want to test is my yeah, this one. Again, I don't, you're not going to be able to see that because the focus is so bad. But this one definitely has some flashing in here. i got to get out of the way. So I'm going to see if I can push some of it out without wrecking the threads. And I have a 4 millimeter. This Instead of 5, I did a 4 millimeter on this one. And I'm going to have to use my hex key. Well, it's going through even with the interference from the plastic. I can see it. It's pushing the pushing that bit of plastic out of the way. You can just barely see it right in there. If I can tip it. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna just drive that through, back it out. I think this is gonna work great. So no need to babble on too much longer. You can see how. These inserts are easy to use. I imagine it's quite a bit easier and um, probably makes some sense if you're going to do a lot of this to invest in a set of tips that actually fit the uh, knurling because then you won't have a you won't have that point coming through like I did kind of getting in the way so um, yeah this works really well. Let me you know that, that little bit of shrapnel just uh, cleaned up right out of there and yeah, so I'm I'm really happy. This is this all is gonna work. Um, doesn't seem to matter that the length the length doesn't necessarily have to match the you know the width of the wall in my case or you know as long as you've got a a, a good melting um, edge for it to hang on to. But this really does seem to be the case where slow and steady wins the race when you're inserting these because I could I could see if I cranked up the heat on the soldering iron that it could go really quickly and easily get away from you. I like going slow because you have it really feels like you have a lot of control that way. So I hope you found this useful and maybe learned something along the way with me. If you'd like me to pursue the filament shelf thing behind me um, and give you more info and share my models on that, let me know in the comments. I'll be uh, happy to do that. I'm just going to take some time to get it organized and kind of show off some of the different things I've modeled because in addition to these little slide-on clips, I've got things that support conduit to hang a pole underneath the shelf and some other cool things. So anyway, I appreciate you stopping by and checking this out, and I hope you have a great day. See you later.